August 19, 1982. The Atlanta Braves, in the midst of a tight division race with the Los Angeles Dodgers, are warming up for the final matchup of a four-game series against the Expos. As the 7 p.m. start time approaches, every member of Atlanta's starting lineup is ready to go, except for one player. At this very moment, with the game on the line, the Braves' starting pitcher is stranded on the highway, lost in his home city. This is the tale of Perimeter Pascual Perez, one of the most colorful baseball players of the 1980s. But be warned, this story does not have a happy ending. Signed by the Pittsburgh Pirates out of the Dominican Republic in 1976, Pascual Perez was the oldest of four members of his family who would go on to play professional baseball, followed by his brothers Melito and Carlos and his cousin Yorkies. After working his way through the minor leagues, Pascual made his major league debut with the Pirates in 1980 and would become a member of Pittsburgh's starting rotation following the 1981 strike. He went 2-7 and seven over 17 appearances in 81 and was traded to the Braves in the summer of 1982. It was at this time that Pascual Perez first made headlines in the baseball world. Anyone who's been to Atlanta can tell you that the roads there are… a lot. So as he made his way to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for his first ever home start with his new club, Pascual made the wise decision to stick to the main road, Interstate 285. Unfortunately, as he drove along I-285, also known as the Loop for the way it encircles the city, he missed his exit. Unfamiliar with the layout of Atlanta, he decided to circle back around rather than test his luck on the side streets. But here's the thing. The loop is 64 miles long, meaning that a trip all the way around would take hours. Pasquale wasn't worried though. He was still early for the game and had plenty of time to make the trip around. Unfortunately for him, his second attempt to find the exit failed too, sending him on yet another lap around the perimeter. Accounts of this event disagree on exactly how many times Perez missed his exit. Some say twice, others three times. But one thing's for sure, by the time the game was about to begin, Pasquale was nowhere near the stadium, having pulled into a convenience store after running out of gas. Luckily, the clerk happened to be a baseball fan, and recognizing Pasquale, asked him why he wasn't at the game yet. Pasquale explained the situation, and the clerk gave him directions to the field. As he finally arrived at the game, Perez was certain that he was going to be sent back down to the minors for missing his start. Fortunately, veteran pitcher Phil Necro had stepped in to start the game, and the Braves had won 5-4. Manager Joe Torre fined Perez 100 pesos, and the story became the source of many a joke in the Braves clubhouse. Pasquale's teammates hung maps of the city on his locker, and the team made him a warm-up jacket with the words I-285 emblazoned on the back. The Braves even went on to hand out 14,000 maps of I-285 to fans to commemorate the pitcher affectionately known as Perimeter Pasquale. His unplanned tour of the city notwithstanding, Pascual Perez actually turned out to be one of Atlanta's most reliable pitchers, earning the start in Game 1 of the 1982 National League Championship Series against the St. Louis Cardinals. He ended up surrendering four runs over five innings, as the Braves lost the first of a three-game sweep by the Cards. Undeterred by his playoff loss, Perez had a career year in 1983, and was selected for his first and only All-Star game by Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog. He finished out the season with a 15-8 record and a 3.43 ERA over 215 and a third innings. His 144 strikeouts led the team, but the Braves fell just short of their second straight division title. Perez had an almost identical season in 1984, pitching to the tune of a 3.74 ERA over 211 innings. At the same time, he had begun to stand out as one of the most colorful players in the league. His gap-toothed smile and jerry curls, combined with his bright gold chains, meant that Pascual Perez could be recognized from just about anywhere in the ballpark. He also developed a reputation as something of a headhunter, in large part thanks to an August 12th game against the San Diego Padres in 1984. On the very first pitch, Perez drilled Padres batter Alan Wiggins with a fastball, prompting the San Diego pitchers to throw at him every time he batted. By the time Perez came up to bat again in the eighth inning, tensions were simmering. A final inside fastball by Craig Lefferts sent the Braves storming out onto the field, beginning what would go down as one of the most memorable brawls in Major League history. Coaches and players were ejected left and right, fans were arrested for jumping the fence to join the fray, and this guy took off his shirt for some reason. 
All in all, things were looking good for the 27-year-old hurler, but that all changed after the 1985 season, in which he posted an abysmal 1-13 record over 22 starts. Just how did one of the most promising young pitchers in baseball at the beginning of the year fall this far? One answer stems from a myriad of shoulder injuries which plagued Perez throughout the year, necessitating three stints on the disabled list. More troubling to the Braves, however, was his erratic behavior. In between a pair of July series, Perez suddenly went AWOL, disappearing from the club for four days before reappearing as if nothing had happened. When asked about his sudden leave of absence, he provided no explanation. There's no need to apologize, that's not how it works. I shake hands with everybody and start pitching. At the same time, a number of controversies regarding alleged drug use had begun to pop up around the young pitcher. In January of 1984, news broke that Perez would be missing the beginning of the season after he was arrested in the Dominican Republic for cocaine possession. He had been sentenced to three months in jail and would be suspended by Commissioner Bowie Kuhn for one month after his release. As rumors of further substance abuse continued to swirl around Perez, the Braves decided to cut ties in the spring of 1986. Pascual Perez did not play that season. What had started out as a promising career appeared to have met its premature end. The Expos had a problem. Having lost future Hall of Famer Andre Dawson to free agency and all-star closer Jeff Reardon to a cost-cutting trade, Montreal was about to enter the 1987 season short on talent with next to no cash to spend. To top it off, the club's once deep farm system was completely depleted. In desperate need of starting pitching, the Expos brought in a hodgepodge of past their prime veterans in the hopes of striking gold. Among these misfits was Pascual Perez, now 30 years old and over a year out from his last professional appearance. Perez started the season in AAA, but after an August call-up in which he pitched nine innings of one-run ball against the Dodgers, he quickly became not only the best pitcher on the Expos staff, but the best in the National League. He won seven consecutive starts, carrying Montreal into an unexpected pennant race with the Cardinals, which lasted all the way until the very last week of the season. From that time on, Pascual Perez became a fan favorite for the Expos. In addition to his pitching heroics, his quirky style of play earned him the immediate affection of Montreal fans. Although his fastball and changeup would have been enough for him to get by on, Perez would throw up to 10 different pitches per game, including a looping, slow ephus that he called the Pasquale pitch. After every strikeout, he would shoot imaginary finger guns at his opponents and would sprint off the mound at the end of an inning, his gold chains and curls bouncing all the way. Rather than holding runners on at first the standard way, Perez would bend over and peer between his legs at the first baseman. His athleticism made him an outstanding pinch runner, but he was absolutely inept as a hitter, going 2 for 58 in 1988. However, you never would have known from the way he approached the plate, standing in the box with the purpose and confidence of a seasoned slugger. In any other city, Pascual Perez might have rubbed more conservative fan bases the wrong way, but in Montreal, he was a bona fide star. Of course, should anybody have expected differently from the same city that brought us all Yuppie? After a successful 1988 season, which was highlighted by a rain-shortened no-hitter against the Phillies on September 24th, Perez was primed to be a major player in what was supposed to be a contending Montreal club. However, in spring training of 1989, he was handed a suspension by MLB as a result of his cocaine use years prior. After returning to the team, his 0-7 record prompted the Expos to bring in veteran Mark Langston for pitching help, trading away a package that included a 25-year-old lefty named Randy Johnson to the Seattle Mariners. Fortunately for Perez, he was able to turn his season around, finishing the year with a 3.31 ERA over 198 innings, enough to earn him a lucrative deal with the New York Yankees. During his two seasons in the Bronx, Perez had trouble staying healthy, although his 2.87 ERA over that period was excellent. However, things came to a close when MLB handed down a second suspension after a positive test for cocaine. This, combined with his injuries, spelled the end of Pascual Perez's time in Major League Baseball. In total, Perez racked up a 67-68 record to go along with a 3.44 ERA over his 11-year MLB career. And while his stats weren't much to look at, Many fans who are around to watch him pitch consider Perez, in the words of David Medvin, a Hall of Famer in baseball's theater of the absurd. There were persistent rumors in the years following his departure that Perez wanted to attempt a major league comeback. However, despite a brief stint with the China Times Eagles in Taiwan in 1996, little more was heard about the idiosyncratic former star. That is, until 2012 when reports came out of the Dominican Republic of a botched robbery at former MLB pitcher Pascual Perez's solo apartment. 
A group of thieves, apparently attempting to steal his Major League pension check, attacked Perez in his home, where he suffered a fatal stab wound. He was 55. Over the following days, tributes to Perez poured out from fans and players alike. They celebrated his energetic style of play and lamented what might have been had he not gotten lost along the way.